Hi, this is Lloyd Vickery, coming from uh, IBM Auckland in New Zealand. Uh, with me today, we're very privileged to have Russ Kennedy. Hi Russ. Hello Lloyd. Um, here today we're going to talk about object storage, uh, some of the trends, how it can add value to your business, um, and, and where it's going. Russ Kennedy's been with, uh, sort of playing with object storage since 2007, which is pretty much when uh, it started coming to commercial the commercial world as a, as, a, as a way to solve storage challenges. So he's got a lot of depth of experience. Right now he sits as the Vice President of Product Strategy for Cleversafe, which IBM purchased last year for $1.2 billion. Well done, Russ. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, where that's sort of shaping the market and, and how you guys can take advantage of that. So Russ, um, in your years working with object storage, what's the most compelling customer story that you that you've seen? Uh, so, so many, Lloyd. So first of all, thank you for uh, for having me uh, today and for this chance to, to discuss object storage. And it's such an interesting part of the market. Uh, I, I guess if I go back to the 2007 days, uh, it was very early stage, as you said, for object storage and. And, and clients, you know, we'd sit down and, and have a conversation with them, talk about some of their challenges, some of their issues, some of their problems. And, you know, the, the, the most interesting thing that I saw in those early days is when you got to a client that really had some challenges, really had some issues with data growth, particularly unstructured data growth and whatnot, the light bulbs would go on when we started talking mm -hmm. to them about you know, a, a more simplified architecture, an architecture that's designed to scale, an architecture that's designed to be always available and always on, you know, the, the, the light bulb started to go on in certain people's heads. Certain people didn't get it right away and that was a, a bit of a challenge, but you know, we'd, we'd have the conversations with the guys, like uh, the guys at Shutterfly, who were one of our early customers. And, uh, you know, and they started to, to see the benefits that could come into their organization by going with an architecture like an object storage system like we were, we were mm. providing at that mm. time. And that was, that was very interesting and very compelling. Now in the market, you know, everybody understands what object storage is, everybody knows that object storage is a, a, uh, a unique way to store data in particularly unstructured data. And there's a lot of choices out there and a lot of options out there, but in those early days that wasn't the case. So I'd say my most compelling memories of that time were just getting to have the conversations with some, some very cool thinking people and seeing their, uh, you know, their eyes light up and the light bulbs go on in their head when they started to see the, the benefits that we could bring. Fantastic. And um, I, remember, I remember one story, uh, which I'm hoping you can perhaps elaborate on a little bit. Uh, I heard that you had clearly said that one customer that had a bad batch of drives and a whole bunch sort of fails in a short period and the system managed to stay up and running. So how, how many sort of drives are we talking about and what was the period? Yeah, so it, it, it's interesting you bring that up. I mean, that, that has been, uh, we've had that over multiple uh, iterations in our, in our history, in CleverSafe's history. Um, and the interesting thing about the way we treat the data and the way we manage the data is that we're able to absorb you know, significant failures of drives without impacting the, the customer's operation. Now, obviously, you have to replace bad drives. You have to be, you know, you have to be fairly diligent about that. But our architecture and our software is is very well tuned to be able to detect and to be able to prevent uh, any sort of impact when that happens. And we've gone through. I mean, it, I'm not going to say who, and I'm not going to say what vintage, sure. but we've gone through several iterations of very problematic drive failure rates and we've gone through with flying colors we you know we've, we've certainly you know been attuned to that and been aware of that uh, and our clients have as well but they see the benefit of the architecture and the way we treat the data that it's not as impactful had that been the same case in, in a traditional storage system data would have been lost for sure and you know we're able to overcome that with because I know in the, in the standard RAID 6 architecture, which, which we used to see a lot, you know, you might have uh, two, two drives fail and, and then you're just kind of sweating, sweating bullets. Uh, you start to sweat on the first one. Yeah. Because if the second one fails, yeah. then you're really sweating bullets and, and you really got to act. Exactly, exactly. And then, you know, as, as storage technologies have evolved sort of a little bit, 
you might have a, a group of ratings and you could sort this down a couple more drives failing. Yeah. Um, how, how many drives are we talking sort of roughly uh, in these instances? So the two, four, ten? Well, it, in some cases, many more than that. I mean, you look at a large population of drives and you're talking about an annual failure rate in some cases of 30-40%, which is a lot mm -hmm. in a year, especially over mm -hmm. a large population. Uh, but again, you know, we've been able to weather those situations because of the way that we deal with the data. Now, I just want to make one clarifying point. That is a, a way that the CleverSafe system deals with drive issues and drive challenges. That's not necessarily inherent to all object storage systems. Okay. Object is different in some cases than an erasure coding object storage system, which is, which is CleverSafe's architecture and technology. But again, we've seen some significant failure rates, been able to withstand those because of the power of our software and the capabilities that our software brings to the point where customers have not experienced any issues with that. Cool. And something that I'd encourage you guys to think about is, you know, with your current storage system structure, what would happen if 50 drives failed in a, in a weekend? You know, could it stay up and running? Um, and that's one of the benefits and one of the reasons why we're talking to customers about object storage because you can start to withstand those sorts of, sorts of failures. Um, so in terms of, thanks for that, that picture. Sure. Uh, just taking on a, we're not going to hold you anything, you know. <laughs> we're not recording this. Um, <laughs> just give us, give us a bit of a perspective on, on where, you, where you think things might head in object storage in say the next five years. Yeah, sure. So. I think if you look out over the next five years, well, first of all, the, the growth of data in most industries is significant. I mean, any industry today, any organization today, you know, you're probably looking at 50%, in some cases 100%, some cases more than 100% growth per year, depending on the industry and the type of data that they're generating. And certainly at that growth rate, uh, people have to think differently about their storage architecture, their storage infrastructure, about their infrastructure in general, and how do they handle that that kind of growth? How do they capture that kind of data? How do they utilize that data for uh, you know, for uh, advancing their business, for becoming more agile, for being more competitive in their organization, for delivering a better experience to their customers and their clients? So. I think as you look out over the next five years, certainly object storage is already now well entrenched in most organizations. Uh, people are looking at either on-premise, private cloud kind of solutions, or they're looking at cloud-based solutions, or maybe a combination, a hybrid combination of the two. And I think object will certainly be a big part of people's infrastructure as they look out over the next four to five years, primarily because it handles the growth of particularly unstructured data, and more and more of that's being generated every day, certainly more and more uh, and denser objects are being built and, and generated every day, but you need to have a different way of, of dealing with it. So would you say, you know, if you're not looking at object storage now, should you be? Well, I would say if you're not looking at it now, you're behind. You, you're, your competition is, is ahead of you. Certainly you're uh, spending more money than you probably should be spending on your storage infrastructure. So you should be looking at it if you're not already. Uh, certainly there's uh, many choices out there, as I mentioned before. I think we have a very compelling solution and a solution that can, you know, that can be deployed in a variety of different ways to help, to help clients and customers. But yeah, you should definitely be looking at object storage for, particularly for growth and unstructured data. If you're not already, you're already behind. Cool. So, I mean, uh, I know you work for, for CleverSafe now, IBM Object Storage. If we take a step outside of that, mm -hmm. just for a second, um, and look at, customers and what's going to be right for them in, in general. Mm -hmm. When looking at object storage solutions, what are some of the things that people should, should be looking out for? Sure, so I think if you step back from just the storage infrastructure and look at the, the market in general, I think certainly uh, new application development, uh, born on the cloud kind of applications, certainly mobile, uh, analytics, uh, cognitive. I mean, there's a variety of different technologies that are coming to market or coming into play in, in most organizations. An object is a very prime storage infrastructure to be able to handle that, that new way of doing business and those new technologies. Uh, it certainly fits very well with a cloud infrastructure and, and a set of cloud services that, that clients are using and, and, and benefiting from today. Uh, one of the benefits of, of cloud-based object storage, which we provide as well, is the ability to, con to pay as you consume it, right? So you don't have to invest significantly in infrastructure and whatnot. You can just use it, pay for it as you use it. If you don't need it anymore, you certainly can, can uh, you know, 
can reduce your, your uh, amount of infrastructure that you're using. So you have a lot of flexibility. And I think with that flexibility, you have agility, you have the ability to, to uh, bring applications online very quickly, to service your customers and your clients with new technologies and new capabilities very rapidly. And I think Object just fits into that whole mentality. Fantastic. Um, so you said that you know, if you're not embracing objects that sort of you're behind, mm -hmm. are there any organizations or, or, or verticals where you, you think these guys must, this is like a, a must have, where, where? Well, as you look out over the, the, the time horizon of object yeah. stores, I mean, some of the early adopters were service providers themselves. They were clients from our perspective that would buy our technology, our hardware and our software, and they would deliver a service to their clients a storage-based, web-based storage service to their clients, maybe around a particular application, like uh, I mentioned Shutterfly, they're a photo sharing service, we have several others in that in that vertical. Um, you know, so that was sort of the early adopters of object storage, and in fact, even Amazon, who is now the biggest object storage system in the world today, was essentially you know a repository for you know unstructured data objects initially, and they've grown to, to, to many, many things beyond that. So I think, that was sort of the origins. Uh, media and entertainment companies, companies that are dealing with large objects that are video based or video in nature, uh, certainly are, are a big growth area. Uh, now we're seeing a lot of growth in healthcare and life sciences, genomics, that, that industry is certainly taking off from a technology perspective and there's a lot of data being generated there that needs to be preserved and protected for long periods of time. Certainly a lot of analytics in that space as well, which I think is very, very interesting. Uh, we're working with clients today that are storing genomics data for, uh, you know, for advancements and studies for cures for cancer and other diseases. So I think all of that is, is, is certainly a very interesting uh, space to be playing in. Uh, and, and, but if you look at the market now, uh, just about any enterprise of any size that has uh, any kind of business uh, uh, processes that are generating data would need something that can store that data for long periods of time, be able to analyze that data to help them become more competitive, more agile, more efficient, and be able to do so in a way that's flexible and, and scalable. I think most organizations today would see the benefits of an object storage solution. Cool, cool. Okay, um, good. Something that interested me, uh, in 2009, uh, you, you left Clever Safe, stayed on as an advisor. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what brought you back as a full-time sort of partner in 2011? Well, I always loved CleverSafe. I mean, it's a great, great organization, had great technology, great people. I left for very personal reasons, uh, but always wanted to, to mm -hmm. look for an opportunity to come back, and I certainly did have that in, in 2011. Uh, I, I, I say it was a great decision on my part. Uh, we, we, we had a great run, uh, uh, you know, from, from that time frame on, on through until the acquisition of IBM and continue to have a great run. So. So it was a great decision on my part to come back. What I saw at that time though, and I continue to see, is the opportunity uh, with object storage, the opportunity with our technology, and now even greater, the opportunity with IBM and working with IBM and the ability to, uh, to be in places like Auckland, New Zealand, where we hadn't had a presence before, yeah. but now yeah. we have an opportunity to come here and speak to clients and help them understand the benefits of object storage, the benefits of our approach to object storage. So I think the, the, uh, you know, the future of our company and our technology certainly is now part of IBM and IBM's cloud strategy going forward is just tremendous. So I, I see that as a, a very strong opportunity going forward. Fantastic. And in the same sort of vein, uh, I know you started out when you spent a lot of time working with automated tape libraries mm -hmm. uh, and, and now obviously very heavily invested your your personal life and, and yourself into object storage. Sure. Well, do you see that as a as a shift from some type of objects in general in the marketplace, or is it more exciting technology? What's some of the reasons behind that? Well, so yeah, interesting. I did have a long here a history in my personal career in, in, in tape and tape automation, and, and I think there's still certain use cases that tape is mm -hmm. is valid for. Uh, but I think object gives clients an opportunity now to take information that they want to preserve for a long period of time, do so at a, at a, at a price point and a cost point that is compelling, but yet still make the data available online, make it accessible from uh, all over the globe, 
Uh, I think that's one of the benefits of object storage, and particularly cloud-based object storage systems that give people the ability to access data very easily from anywhere in the world, through any device in the world. And, and you know, those kinds of capabilities will fuel other innovations and other technologies that, that come along. Certainly, as I said, tape has a very uh, specific uh, uh, area that it solves and a, and a very specific appeal to certain clients and certain use cases. But I think as object continues to grow and as people continue to want to keep data accessible and online, uh, but do so at a, at a cost point, at a price point, and a, and a uh, secure point, and a scalable point, I think object storage is, is going to continue to grow uh, in, that, in that thing. Cool, cool. Um, so, great, great sort of industry overview. Thank you there, Russ. Sure. What I'm going to do is hit you with a couple of rapid fire questions. Okay. Uh, no right or wrong answer. <laughs> uh, these actually are borrowed from Tim Ferriss, so shout out to Tim Ferriss for, for coming up with these in his amazing podcast. Yeah. Um, okay, when you think of the word successful, mm -hmm. who do you think of and why? Uh, so there's a number of people that you would think of that are successful. Certainly there's, uh, you know, there's business people like uh, Steve Jobs or something like that who is you know, so innovative and so creative. I think of our former founder, Clever City, a gentleman by the name of Chris Gladwin. And, and Chris is a very uh, uh, innovative, creative entrepreneur. He's now on to his fourth company, Clever City Business third company that he founded, but he's such a down-to-earth kind of person. He's such a, uh, you know, an easygoing uh, person that you can talk to and, and, and get along with and, and have a great conversation about. He's very, uh, you know, he's very well-spoken, uh, certainly has a very strong vision for mm -hmm. helping people solve specific problems. So I think of people like that. Certainly you can think of uh, people in, uh, you know, in the sports world that are successful. They're athletes and they're, they're you know, going to levels beyond where other people have gone. You know, so we're in the Olympics time frame now, and there's certainly some, some interesting yeah. things that are going yeah. on there. So you, know, you think of somebody like a Michael Phelps, who's just done it for so many years and been successful in, in that respect. But I also think you can look at you know, uh, ordinary folk, you know, people that are, that are you know, striving to do something better, or striving to help communities, or striving to help their family, or, or you know, other, other people around them. And, and say they're successful as well. So you can see success in a variety of different folks. Cool. Long answer. You probably wanted more of a rapid fire. No, answer, no, no. Long or short, it's all good. It's all good. It's a It's a great insight. So um, next one. What's something that you believe that other people would think might be insane or crazy? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, I always believe that you can do whatever you want, whatever you set your mind to. And I don't think people think that's crazy, but I think there's a lot of people that say there's, there's limitations to what uh, an individual can I don't think there are. I think certainly individuals have a lot of power. I think when individuals come together collectively for a common vision and a common goal, they have even more power than the individuals themselves in that respect. Uh, there's not a lot of people that believe in that. There's a lot of people that believe in the, you know, the, the idealist, individualist, and, and that's how you become successful. But I think it's, it's more um, uh, success as a team. And, and I think you know, teams are, are extremely Invigorating. Mm. You get into the right setting, into the right yeah. uh, you know uh, situation. I see that a lot in you know the, the, the former Clever State company, now part of IBM, IBM Cloud Object Storage. It's a it's a group of very very smart people that are committed to collective success, that work together to help drive that collective success. And I see that as a you know something that uh, it, it's invigorating. You want to be part of it. You want to work. You, you want to contribute to that. And you certainly don't want to let your down. So I think that's a uh, you know an area that that I see that's that's different maybe than some other. Fantastic, cool, cool. Uh, what are some common misconceptions about you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> if any. I don't know. That's that, that's an interesting question. Uh, do we so, really know, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, that, I I don't know. I mean, I I, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy yeah. working with other people. Uh, you know, I'm I'm at the point in my career where I've had a, a lot of success. I've worked on a lot of interesting. Uh, projects and technologies. I love the fact that I can now have an opportunity to sort of mentor others that are, you know, sort of where I was maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And I love the, the opportunities to do that. I work a lot with uh, you know, some of the newer people that are coming into our organization, and, and, uh, and I like to spend a lot of time with them, get to know them personally.
personally and understand what drives them and motivates them. Because I, I think it, you know, as you as you go through life and you and you have your success and, and, you, and you're able to achieve things, you have to look back and say, "There's others that are coming behind you," mm-hmm. and you, you gotta you gotta be able to look at that and say, "Can I help that person?" Or is there, you know, who who was it in my life that inspired me? Can I be that same inspiration for somebody else in, in, in their life? So I don't know if that's a misconception, but it's certainly the way I believe and, and how I like to, uh, to lead my life. That's surprising. It's something that I hadn't initially thought. So yeah, very, very cool. I like what you're doing. And a bit more, a bit more, just at a high level. Favorite film? Yeah. Favorite so, movie? So I, I do have one favorite movie. I, I don't know if, 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 if this movie gets shown here a lot. It's, 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 it's a fairly old movie, but it's a, it's a movie about a, a prison escape. And the, the context, the setting is, is in the, the 1930s, I believe, or 40s in, uh, in New England. The movie is called The Shawshank Redemption. Uh, it's Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins is the guy that escapes. And he's in prison for a long period of time. And Morgan Freeman is, is sort of his colleague and counterpart. And, and he escapes from prison, this prison that no one had ever escaped from, and actually frames the, the warden, who is a little bit of a suspicious character. but. You know, I flip around the channels every once in a while, and whenever that movie's on, I'll sit down. No matter what I'm doing, I'll sit down and watch that movie. I've probably seen it, you know, maybe 30 times, <laughs> bits and pieces of it here and there. But I really love it. I, it's just a great story. It's, you know, I, I like Morgan Freeman as an actor, and uh, and and, uh, and I, I just think it's a great story. Great. I've, I've had a lot of people talk about it, so I have to I have to watch it because I've been meaning to. Yes, you have to watch it. It is yeah. it is a very entertaining film. A very uh, you know, it has a lot of life history and life, life, um, you know, uh, moments that, that, that are that come through the film and the actors. Very well acted uh, movie, and uh, you know, yeah, do watch it. Okay, okay. Final question: What's the most useful product or service that you bought last year for maybe had a just you know, not not too expensive, but a hundred dollars sort of? Yeah. So uh, I guess the one thing that does come to mind. I mean, I I I, I don't like to shop. <laughs> but I do have to have clothes, and I do have to have uh, you know I do have to 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 you know be able to, to do that. So I I've gotten into uh, you know uh, sort of online ordering of, mm-hmm. of uh, you know shirts and slacks and, and, and those kinds of things. So um, I don't want to say the name of the company, but I have their app, and I get on I get online very easily, and I, I have my the ones that fit me well and the, the styles I like, and so I may be able to go on and. Quickly order the things I want. They ship them right to my house. And I'm all set. I don't have to go into a store to, you know, to try things on and to, and, and to buy things. That's so cool. that's probably the most useful thing that, that I've. Uh, so like every man's heaven, right there. It yeah. actually, it actually <laughs> is pretty nice if you don't like to shop. I know my wife loves to shop, and I'll let her go do that that all day long, but I don't. So well, I, I was gonna say that if your wife probably makes up for it, <laughs> she probably does, which is which is great. But for me, it's about convenience and about something I like that I don't have to worry about. Right? I know it's gonna fit, and I know it's gonna. You know, something I want to wear, and, and so it's easy. Fantastic. Well, look, thanks for joining us, Russ. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Lloyd. Enjoyed it. Thank you. And thanks for joining us.